got a final from Toronto. Cleveland uh, beats the Blue Jays 2 0. Wait, the one is 6 and 8. Lamantic takes the loss. He's 2 and 10. Here's a ball outside. Native of Youngstown, Ohio, lives in Phoenix. Delivers way outside, and the count now is 2 2. He went to a Phoenix Junior College and also the University of Arizona. He's 6'5 and weighs 180. Here's a curve over, struck him out. LaFleur goes down on strike. And Mark Wagner will be the batter now. Well, the Tigers shortstop coming up. He did not see action in the first game. Oh, we'll pass along the batting average for Mark. He's hitting 244. Nobody on. Second game just started. The Yanks won the first one three to two. Race it delivers. It is a slow curve wide to mark ball one. Race it's got his start at Fort Lauderdale in 75. Last year he was at the West Haven in Syracuse coming up the ladder. They used him in relief even in the minors. There's a chopper at back to race it. He loved it. The throw to first got him two down. And Staub will be the batter. We've got a little further word now on that controversial play in the first game. Mickey Stanley says that the youngster who reached over the fence jarred his arm. He was under the ball, and Stanley's contention was that he had a chance to catch the ball very easily, but his arm was jarred by fans. And then also, he said he didn't chase the ball because he didn't know where it went. He thought it was either in the kid's hands or had uh, gone in the seat. Strike as a foul foul one off in the seat back at third base. Race it's the uh, tall left hander winds and pitches. There's a very wide curve. He's not getting that curve over much except the one he threw the floor. One and one, the count on Rusty. Here's the wind up in the pitch. He takes the ball outside. LaFleur started the game by striking out. Then Wagner bounced out to the pitcher. That's where we are now. Staub at the plate. 2-1 the count on him. Wind up on the left hand of deals. There's a curve over above the knees. 2-2 two -two the count on Rusty. Staub in the first game had a single to drive and run in the first inning. One for four. Side arm fastball. Pop foul. It'll be out of play. Back into the seat. 2-2 two -two the count on Staub. Keith, the rookie catcher working back of the bat, Nettles at third, Stanley, Fred Stanley at short, Garcia at second, and Chris Campbell's playing first base for the Yanks in the second game. Here's a ball, he jammed him at the shoulder. Oh, count on Staub. In the outfield, a little different alignment for Billy Martin's outfield is. Thomason in left, Rivers in center, and Johnstone is in right. Now they wind up in the pitch. He swings as a fly ball to center. Here comes Rivers. He won't get it. It drops in front of him. And Saab has a two-out single in the Tiger first inning. That'll bring about Jason Thompson, who hit a home run in the first game, his 18th homer. After Jason had that home run with two out in the third inning off the start of Gidry, well, the Tigers did not get a hit the rest of the game. Gossage came in relieving Gidry in the ninth inning and set the side down one, two, three. But Gidry... Was the winner. And Hiller and Relief took the loss for the Tigers. Jason Thompson batting against the left hander Racich. Dave Racich. Here's a ball low. The Yankees had him in their 1970 spring training camp as a batting practice pitcher. Then he came back this year as a candidate for the team. Here's the 1 0 pitch to Thompson. He takes the wide one, 2-0 to oh, count on Jason. Good fastball. He's got a curve. He throws a fourth ball at times. Man on first, two down, no score. First inning, second game. Here's a fly ball. Hit the left field. Chasing is Thomas, and it is deep. And he won't get it. It's off the wall. Stop coming for third. Here's the throw into Bucky Dent, and Staub holds it third on the two-out double by Jason Thompson. 
That ball hit right at the base of the wall in deep left field. And the Billy Martin wants to come out and talk with his rookie pitcher now. Rodriguez will be the next man to bat. Keith, the catcher, goes out to join in the conversation. Dave Rachett and uh, Billy Martin talking things over on the mound. Rodriguez uh, waiting at the plate. Uh, the Mets in Pittsburgh were rained out today. Cincinnati leads the Dodgers at Cincinnati 3-2 in the fifth inning. The Phillies leading the Cubs at Chicago. 3-0 there in the third. We gave that final from Toronto. The Indians uh, got a shutout uh, pitching job from Rick Waite and beat the Blue Jays 2-0. Uh, Baltimore, Boston were rained out. Here's the pitch to Rodriguez, and he takes a high curve for a ball. In the first game, Aurelio had a walk, but did not get a hit. He went 0 for 3 officially. Runners at second and third, two out, no score, first inning. He delivers a curve at over above the knees. Ken Kaiser, the plate umpire, he was the center of all the controversy in the seventh inning of the first game. Waiting on a 1-1 pitch now, Rodriguez. He takes the ball low. Good stop by Heath to catch you. He had to dig that one out of the dirt. Two and one, the count on Rodriguez. Tigers are home tomorrow night. They'll be battling the Toronto Blue Jays Monday and Tuesday night. And then the Indians come to Detroit Wednesday and Thursday night. After that, the Tigers hit the road again. Here's the two one pitch. He swings on the line foul. It's down past third base. He hit a low liner very sharply. But pull it foul. 2 2 the count on the radio. Racich has made the usual Yankee stops along the way. Port Lauderdale, Syracuse, West Haven, and Syracuse again. Now winds a 2 2 pitch. The radio strikes out on a high, hard one. Now the Tigers threaten but can't score in the opening inning. As they have no runs on two hits, no errors. They leave two, and at the end of the half inning, Tigers nothing, the Yanks coming to bat. When your car needs an oil change, chances are what you say is change the oil, which is all you need to say unless you want to make a change for the better. Namely, new Ultra D motor oil from Marathon. Marathon's new Ultra D motor oil is a special blend of natural and synthetic ingredients that's really different from conventional blends. A special blend that means better gas mileage for you. More miles per tank full. New Ultra D motor oil was tested by independent laboratories, including road tests in typical city and highway driving, and the results were the same. Improved gas mileage. More miles per tank full. So go ahead. Improve your mileage. Get your car's engine together with Marathon's new Ultra D motor oil. A change for the better from the people who do it better. Marathon Oil Company. now officially that Gates Brown was ejected from the game uh, before the game started. You remember that uh, Ralph House went up to give the umpires the lineup. He gave them the lineup very quickly, turned and uh, went right straight back to the dugout. And then Gates had to go out to uh, get the carbon copy that the uh, manager has to keep. And also the lineup from the other team. And as he went out there, he got into a conversation with uh, Kaiser, the umpire and was put out of the ball game before it even started. Remember one time that happened to Leo DeRocha with the Giants. And also to uh, one of the uh, Baltimore catchers, uh, Frank Zupo, one time before the second game. The umpires came back uh, across in front of the Baltimore dugout and uh, Zupo said something to the umpire and he got the thumb before the game started. So it's nothing uh, new. It doesn't happen too often. 
But Gates got the thumb before the game got underway. Here's Mickey Rivers, who was a Yankee hero in a spent hitting role in the seventh inning of the first game. When he had the double that caused all the controversy, Rivers just reactivated before the game today. Batting 265, Mickey Rivers, left-hand batter, takes a cut and fouls it away over into the Tiger dugout. Yanks won the opener three to two. This one tied, no scores, first inning. Jim Flake, the veteran right-hander, getting ready to go to work and time called at the plate. There's something on the playing field out there in right. It's a balloon that uh, Mickey Stanley will have to retrieve. Rivers waiting on a strike one delivered from the right-handed Slayton. And he takes the curve in for a strike. Two strikes on Mickey. Jay Johnstone and then the Greg Nettles will follow in the Yankee first inning. Here's a fastball low on the way. He almost cut it that one, but he let it go and it's the ball. One and two, the count on Rivers. At 326 for the Yankees last year. He had a great year for Billy Martin. Here's a fly ball to center. LaFleur comes over to his right and back. He has it for the out. One up and one down. Here's Jay Johnstone. Right fielder, left-hand batter. Jay, in the opening game, was a leadoff hitter for the Yankees, and he went 0 for 4. Bounced twice the first, once the second, and struck out. Came here from the Philadelphia team, the Phillies. Here's a strike called on Johnstone. One of uh, baseball's eccentric. Here's the motion and the pitch. Here's a strike called. Strike two. He broke in in eccentric fashion. He room with Jim Pearsall his first year. Here's the pitch. Swing a fly ball to left field. Here comes a walking fuss, digging hard, and he dives and makes the catch. Walking fuss, running hard on the little slow fly ball in the left field, going to his right, dives and held on to it. Nettles will be the Yankee batter now. Two down, nobody on. Left-hand batting uh, third baseman. It was Nettles who walked in the eighth inning and scored the winning run. Went to third on the hit-and-run single by Munson and came home on Chambliss' sacrifice fly to right field. It gave the Yanks the victory. Here's a slow curve that is over but low, ball one. Two out, nobody on. First inning, the Yanks at bat. No score. Slayton pitches. Fastball moved him back. Chicago leading the Twins in the ninth inning in Minnesota, 8-5. to five. Kansas City, Oakland, no score there in the third. The Georgia Cleveland beat Toronto in their first game, 2-0. Baltimore and Boston were rained out in Baltimore today. Here's the 2-0 pitch. It is a ball in the dirt. 3-0, the count on Nettles. Two out bases empty, Yanks at bat, game short his first inning. Now Slayton working from behind, but it is, here's a ball, he walked him, and Chambliss will be the batter. First runner for the Yankees in this game. Chambliss uh, did not get ahead of the first game, but he hit a very important fly ball, the sacrifice that got the winning run home. He flied out uh, four times, twice to right, twice to left. And ready, holds it at the belt. Now that it is, here's a strike call to breaking pitch over. The Giants lean Atlanta 7 to 5 in the seventh. Great and ready pitches. There's a high fly ball. Left center field. Going back is Wagner coming in the floor. And Wagner makes the catch. They almost bump. Walkenfuss came over too, but it was Wagner to handle it all the way in the side retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left at the end of one in the second game. Tigers nothing, New York nothing.
I bought an economy car. Nice little car. Of course, I had to give up big car ride. I just bought a smaller car, too. I gave up a lot of passengers. But with prices going up and up, I figure you gotta give up. Then. Well, I didn't give up. I bought a new Plymouth Volari four-door. And I didn't give up the things I want. I got the big car ride Frank gave up. The room for six Harry gave up. Plus the compact economy they didn't give up. So why didn't they buy a Volari? I give up. Don't compromise when you economize. Although your mileage may vary, the EPA rates a one-barrel, six-cylinder Volari four-door with manual transmission at 28 miles per gallon highway and 20 city. Don't give up. Get a Plymouth Volari. Don't give up. Don't give up. For a great value on Plymouth Volari, see your greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer. This is Jim Garrett. If you want to join a 4-H club or start one, call 4-H, listed under your county's cooperative extension service. See Stanley leading up for Detroit, no score, second inning. Stanley, the Tiger right fielder in the first game, had one hit in four trips. Outfield to uh, left a little bit on him, and the lean left-hander Rasich delivers. It is a ball low to make ball one. Game scoreless, second game, second inning. Yanks took the opener three to two. Here's the motion, the pitch on the way. He cuts and misses. That looks like the fourth ball breaking down and in on him. One and one, they got on Mickey. Walking fast, and then May will follow here in the Tigers' second. He swings a line drive, base hit right field. Over the field, the ball goes Johnstone, backhands it, bobbles it. Stanley goes for two, here's the throw, and he slides in safely. Johnstone tried to backhand the ball there in the gap, and it uh, hit his glove and bounded away. It will be scored as a double for Stanley. Walking Fuss will be the batter. Well, Captain John D. Miller from Montpelier, um, Ohio, now stationed with the U.S. Air Force at Plattsburgh, New York, here with his family trying to root the Tigers in in the second game. Long-time Tiger fan. Here's Walking Fuss, who, sitting 277, didn't see action in the first game. Fouls it away. He was trying to punch the ball to the right side. And he uh, got a breaking pitch and didn't really handle it. He fouled it to the seat. Man on second, Stanley with a double. That's the third Tiger hit, a single and two doubles off the rookie left-hander. Race it. He kicks and deals. Here's a tapper hit up the middle. Grabbed by the shortstop, Stanley. Throw to first. Out at first is walking fuss, and on the third goes Mickey Stanley. Hit a high hopper over the mound, and uh, Stanley caught it right in front of second base and fired over to Chambers for the out. So, man on third now, and Milt May at the plate against the left-hander. May came in as a pinch batter in the ninth inning with two outs, and end of the game with a bounce out to Bucky Denson playing shortstop for the Yankees. The Yankees are pulling their infield in almost to the inner grass on the Milt May. There's a foul right down below it. Strike one to count on Milt. Man on third, Stanley, no score, second inning. One man away. Here's the pitch. He swings and pops the foul. It'll be out of play on the third base side. He got that pitch down on the hand. And had some trouble with it, but he did foul it out of play. Now, Chicago has beaten Minnesota in the first game of their doubleheader, 8-5. to five. Well, Larry Doby uh, gets his uh, first win as the Chicago manager. 8-13-0 for Chicago. Minnesota had 5-7 and made five errors. Now, Rodney had a home run. Here's the set now on the pitch to May. He takes the ball outside. Wood was a winner in that game. He's 9-5. Don takes the loss. He's 7-6. Molly hit a home run. 
and Rivera hit a home run, uh, both for the Twins. First of the doubleheader, Chicago wins it. Now the one-two pitch to Milt. Low and in the dirt. He's had a dive to the glove side to knock that one in front of him. And the count on May, two balls and two strikes. Dillard is uh, waiting at the on-deck circle for Detroit. May digging in again now, waiting on a 2-2 delivery. He takes a high curve at the shoulder, full count on him. Stanley started this inning with a double. Moved to third on the bounce out. He's here now with one down. The game scoreless. And race sits ready to pitch to Milk May. Here it comes. He walked him. It was a low outside curve. That'll bring up Dillard. Steve Dillard uh, coming to the plate now. Right-handed batting infielder. Steve hitting 247. No home run, five runs batted in. They're backing up the infield now and double play depth on him. Here's the pitch. He backs away inside fastball. Ball one, the count on Dillard. He's connected in eight of the last ten games and over that span uh, had 11 for 25. Man on first, man on third. Dillard swings with a bounding ball to third, maybe two. Nettles to second base for one. Rene to first, double play. And the Tigers are out in their second inning. Nettles to Garcia to Chambliss on the hard ground smash to third. No runs, uh, one hit, no errors. One man left. We go to the last half of the second inning. The direct setting, New York setting. No charge checking. Other banks make it tougher. City National makes it easier. Now, while other banks are increasing the minimum savings balance you need for no charge checking, CNB lowers it with combo checking. Nobody, nobody has got for City National Bank has got. Nobody, nobody has got. That's right. Some banks are raising the minimum savings requirement to a whopping $500, but CNB lowers it to $200. A $200 minimum balance in savings or a $200 minimum balance in your checking account that you check without charge. $200 in savings or $200 in checking. And you write all the checks you want without charge. All your checks without charge. Other banks make no charge checking tougher. Combo checking makes it easier. Who's got it? Nobody. A city national bank. Member FDIC. Jackson will lead it off now for the uh, Yankees. We've got a sort of deadlock in the second game in the second inning. The Yankees took the opener three to two. Reggie, the designated batter for the Yankees. Had a single for three in the opener. And the left hand batter takes a high fastball, ball one. a foul out of play back onto the screen. Have it Tiger fan Miss Gloria Lee from the University of Michigan out here to see the Tigers in action in this doubleheader. Right and delivers. Here's a bombing ball up the middle. Deep goes Dillard at second. Plus the throw to first. He got it. Dillard, uh, ranging wide to his right, throws out Reggie Jackson. That'll bring up the left fielder, Jerry Thomason. Another left hand batter to face plate. No score, second inning, second game.
Robinson had a double and a single and a strikeout in that first game, two for three. It's been a pretty consistent hitter for the Yanks. It's a curve low from Slayton, ball one. And so Garcia waiting at the on-deck circle. Slayton pitches. Here's a cut on the foul. It's right down at the plate. One and one, the count on Thomason. Kansas City open the fourth inning scoreless. That second game at Toronto, Cleveland and Toronto scoreless. In the second, Cleveland won the first game 2 nothing from the Blue Jays. He swings and misses on a fastball, a little bit toward the outside. One and two to count on him. Cincinnati now ahead of the Dodgers, three to two of the fifth. Of the Phillies uh, hopping on the Cubs, six to nothing of the fifth inning at Chicago. Here's the one-two serve. He backs him away, an inside curve, two-two. Thomason hits in all directions. You've got to guard all the exits against him. Now Wagner backs up a little bit. It's short to the glove side. Slayton ready. Pitches. There's a bombing ball foul down the first base side. Hit him on the foot. Let's pause briefly here for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Jay Roberts joins you as you meet your new day on Night Flight 76, evenings at 11.30 here on the Goodwill Station, WJR Radio 76, Detroit. Thomas had tried to shake off the hurt on that one. It came down to him on foot. Goes over to the on-deck circle now to talk with uh, Garcia for a moment. 2-2, two -two, the count on him. Milwaukee, Seattle, and Texas and California, they'll be starting soon. Got to keep you up to date on all those other scores uh, through the course of the second game. No score here in the second inning. Slayton ready to pitch now to Thomason. And he takes the fastball wide. Full count on Gary. Steps away from the plate a moment. Now back in the batter's box. One out and nobody on. Here it comes. Swung on. Fly ball left to the field. Walking fast is there. He has it in deep left center. A lot of room to roam out there in that outfield, especially in left center field. Here's uh, Namaso Garcia now stepping in, the rookie second baseman. He's done a good job uh, since they brought him up a week ago from Tacoma. Young man from the Dominican Republic. Garcia had one for two in the opening game. A single and two trips. Right-hander against the right-hander. No score, second inning. There's a ball outside, a little curveball on the way, ball one. Cloudy skies in New York. Here's a pitch. He takes a strike, fastball, at her high outside corner. One and one, they got at him. Nettles uh, got a two-out walk in the opening inning. That's the only Yankee runner so far. Here it comes. He swings fly ball to set a field. The floor is there. He has it in the tied, retired one, two, three. At the end of two, Tigers nothing, Yankees nothing. Pizza lovers, right now you can get a large round pizza from Little Caesars with anything you want on it for the price of an identical small pizza. That's right, a large round pizza with all the trimmings for the price of an identical small. Just bring in the special coupon you'll find in your local newspaper or TV book and they'll do the rest. Mouth-watering goodness at a special low price. No wonder pizza lovers everywhere love Little Caesars Pizza. Little Caesars Pizza, a winner any way you slice it. If you want variety, there's a family in for you. It's the winner's name, Little Caesars Pizza, Little Caesars Pizza, a great tasting treat for you. 
WJR congratulates Patricia DeRocher of Aquinas High School, Southgate, and Daryl Schimmick of Austin Catholic, Detroit, recent recipient of Alma College's Trustee Honor Scholarship. Brown McCall lead it off now against the uh, rookie left-hander, Rasich. Third inning, the Tigers have three hits, but they've not been able to put them together, and the Yankees don't have any hits, and the game is scoreless. LaFour struck out uh, when he let off the game. Right-hand batter takes a curveball from the left-hander into close ball one. Nice league final for you now. St. Louis beat Montreal 5-4, to four. Vukovic the winner, and uh, Woody Fryman takes the loss. There's a ball low. Two and oh, the count on LaFleur. Here's the ball outside. Three and oh, the count on Ron. He'll be followed by Mark Wagner. Tigers batting in the third. They lost the first game three to two to the Yanks. It's a strike called and above the knees, the breaking ball. He throws a fourth ball and also a curve. Ray Fitch was used in relief most of his career. He pitches. Here's a foul out of play. Ralph Houck uh, hates to lose, but I think uh, more than any club, he hates to lose for the Yankees. Played here eight years as a Yankee and, of course, managed uh, for a long time. Incidentally, in his eight years with the Yankees, he did not hit a home run and he did not steal a base. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. It was a bad pitch, and LaFleur was fooled on it. Out of the strike zone, but he swung and missed. That's the third strikeout for the rookie left hander. He victimized uh, LaFleur twice. Here's Wagner, who bounced back to race it the first time they faced each other. And the Mark Texas strike in. Above the knees, strike one. Sandy and go and Houston are tied one to one in the fourth inning. Giants lead, Atlanta leads the Giants nine to seven in the seventh. Pitch outside, one and one now, the count on Wagner. No score here, third inning in New York. Yanks took the opener three to two. Here's the pitch. Wagner swings and fouls it away. That one back in the mezzanine on the first base side. When they rebuilt this stadium, they uh, really uh, made some steep seats up there in the third deck. Here's the pitch on the way, fouled away. Yeah, if you're wait to buy vertigo at all was advisable not to go up there. <laughs> A couple of guys out there on the flight to Pittsburgh. Here's the one-two pitch now to Mark. He takes the strike, struck him out. That was a fastball to fool him. The fourth strike on by Rasich. And here's Rusty Saw with two out and nobody on. Rusty had a single his first time up in this game. Bounding ball, deep first base. Chambers has it, race to the bag, won by Chris, and the Tigers go one, two, three in the third. Here come the Yankees to bat in the third. The game is scored. A little-known player holds the Major League record for the most base hits in an extra-inning game. Now, in the Labatt's Baseball Trivia Quiz, see if you can name that player. It's a hard one to remember, but here's something a little easier. Remember Labatt's. Yes, fans, the best beer Canada brews is here, Labatt's. It's imported for your special times. Ship fresh to you with pride. Labatt's, the clear water, blue sky taste of Canada beer. Brewed in Canada since 1828. Now the answer. On June 21st, 1970, Cesar Gutierrez of the Tigers set the Major League record by going 7-for-7 seven seven in a 12-inning game. Gutierrez smacked six singles and a double en route to his record day. Did you remember that? Then move to the head of the class of the Labatt's Baseball Trivia Quiz. Brought to you by Labatt Importers, Amherst, New York. Well, 
Well, there's the young catcher, uh, Heath, coming to bat now, Mickey Heath. Young man from Tampa in his uh, first uh, big league season with the Yankees. Batting an even 300 right now. He's a right-hand batter. Had him up for a while, then sent him down and brought him back up. There's a drive to right, slicing toward the corner. Stanley chases, has it on one hop. Heath turns and holds on as Mickey fires the ball back in on one hop to Wagner, the shortstop. Good play by Stanley to hold that to a single. That is the first hit for the Yankees. And Fred Stanley will be the batter now. Right hand the batting infielder. Man on first, nobody out. Game scoreless in the third inning. Rodriguez even with a bag at third. Thompson holding with Heath at first base. Stanley jokes the bat, leans in waiting. Grabs the bunt, bumps the ball towards first. Thompson feels it, he'll go to second. They get the front man Heath for the out. And Fred Stanley, instead of getting a sacrifice, is safe on the fourth out. And here's Mickey Rivers, the Yankee leadoff man, coming to bat. He had a fly ball to the floor and cut a field the first trip. Yankees uh, throughout their history have had some uh, fine uh, leadoff hitters. Very important position in that batting order. Earl Combs is uh, one of the best. Back in the 20s and the early 30s. Remember Hank Bauer, a leadoff man who gave the uh, Yankees a lot of power in that spot. Now uh, Rivers swings and pops one up over near first base. Thompson in foul territory. He has it, and Rivers is out. That'll bring up Jay Johnstone, who climbed to left his first trip. Aparicio, one of the fine leadoff men in uh, modern uh, baseball history. If you want to go back a little farther, Eddie Stanky, then uh, go back to Joey Sewell, maybe, and Sam Rice. Joe Rizzuto was a good one here with the Yanks. Max Perry in the National League for the Pirates for many years. Here's a, a strike called. He got a curve across. Two out, one on for the Yanks. Here's a foul fly that will reach the seats upstairs back a third. Strike two on Jay Johnstone. Two out, a man at first base. Here's a pitch. Jay takes the ball. It's off the mid of May. No runs, three hits, no errors for Detroit. The Yankees, no runs, one hit, and no errors. And the first game won by the Yankees. Three to two. Stretch the pitch. He swings a line drive past Thompson's glove into right field. Stanley moving to third. Mickey Stanley fires the ball back into Dillard at second. The Yankees have runners at the corners, and Nettles coming up with two down. Johnstone wraps the single to the right field corner. Man on first and a man on third. Nettles uh, drew a pass in the first inning with two outs. Cloudy skies in New York now. They have uh, told us that rain will be coming in, but uh, a good bit later. Hopefully after the doubleheader is completed. There's a foul fly upstairs to the left of the plate. Minnesota Twins got rid of Nettles. They said he couldn't hit left-handers. He proved them different. Here's a ball outside. One and one. Now May wants the conference with his pitcher's plate. Philly still leads the Cubs in the fifth inning, six nothing. Cincinnati ahead of the Dodgers, three to two. There in the fifth inning, it's Cincy. 
straight and ready. He pitches and nettles. Swings as a pop-up foul off a third. Here comes May. Here comes Rodriguez. They're both here near the dugout, and Rodriguez can't handle it. He got his glove on it as he tried to backhand the ball at the top step of the dugout. He had to stop and uh, not try to fall into the dugout. He can go in the dugout and make a play. It wasn't that, but uh, he couldn't keep his balance if he went in. So he was uh, sort of balancing himself on that top step of the dugout. He tried to backhand the ball and hit his glove and bounded away. Tough play, and it keeps the nettles alive. First man on third for New York. They're threatening to break this goal side. Jim Clayton, the right-hander, looking into pitch now to Nettles with a one-two pitch coming up. He knocked him down with a high, tight one. Nettles, one away, hit the dirt. His batting helmet went down toward the first baseline. And Mr. Kaiser out to dust off the plate. Approve of that maneuver too much, as you can tell by their noisy reaction. Oh, Nettles has shaken himself out now, ready to get back in there to face place. And 2 2 the count on him. Here's the step by Slayton. He delivers Nettles' swing to a fly ball deep right. Stanley going back, and this one is gone. When your car needs an oil change, chances are what you say is change the oil, which is all you need to say unless you want to make a change for the better, namely, new Ultra D motor oil from Marathon. Marathon's new Ultra D motor oil is a special blend of natural and synthetic ingredients that's really different from conventional blends. A special blend that means improved engine protection for you under all kinds of weather and driving conditions. New Ultra D motor oil has special anti-wear additives to protect the critical parts of your engine longer than conventionally blended multi-grade oils up to 15,000 miles. Better motor oil means a better running engine every time you drive your car, wherever you drive. A change for the better from the people who do it better. Marathon Auto Company. Interesting ports of call, great in-flight music, frequent information updates, all a part of Night Flight 76. I'm Jay Roberts. Join me evenings at 11.30 on WJR. Final for us, Atlanta beat the San Francisco Giants 9-7. And game in Atlanta. Necro, the winner, and Moffitt uh, took the ball. 3-0 here, the Yankees lead. Fourth inning, second game. They won the first from 3-2. Let's tune in on Paul Carey. All right, Ernie, Jason Thompson, the lead it off of the Tigers here in the fourth. Rodriguez and Stanley, the next two Tigers in the batting order. 
Jason doubled to the base of the wall in left field in the first inning. Tigers unable to score. There's a strike call. Looks like Jason is going to look at a pitch from Rachich. R-A-J-S-I-C-H. Making his major league debut. He has struck out four and walked one. Wind up the tall left hander fires a little bit low. Racich is all arms and legs out on the mound. He only weighs 180 pounds, but stands trip five. The pitch to Jason swung on. There's a little looper toward left field. It'll drop in for a base hit. Hit that one right off the handle, out over Fred Stanley, the shortstop. So Thompson picks up his second trade hit. It's hit number four for the Tigers, but they've been unable to score. That has been uh, a problem with the Tigers of late. To the games on Friday, as an example, uh, until yesterday's game, the Tigers ranked second in the American League in, in their total hit, tenth in runs scored. And that is an indictment of uh, the Tigers' ability to uh, bring people in when they uh, get them on the bases. Thompson at first. Nobody out. Rodriguez at the plate. He jumps out of the way at an inside fastball. A radio struck out swinging his first time up. He was hit with some three trips in the opener. A look to first by Rachich. Here's the pitch. The inside and low. Good stop by the catcher, Heath. Well, you just have a feeling that Billy Martin strapped for pitching help. And calling on this young man who has been... A relief pitcher down on the AAA level, getting a start, is hoping he'll go long enough so he doesn't have to bring in Sparky Lyles too early. But he just, uh, he'll go with him as long as he stays in command of the ball game, not being roughed up. We've got a conference come on now. Heath goes out to talk to him. We're getting the paid attendance figures right now. You have a feeling that uh, Billy will just stick with him long enough until he gets into trouble and then uh, call upon Sparky Lyle. And of course he has Gossage out there, and Gossage here appeared in the opening game, setting down the Tigers in order in the ninth inning. Here's the pitch to Rodriguez. Low and inside, 3-0 and on our radio. We've got the paid attendance figures now for this doubleheader here at Yankee Stadium. 50,449. Radio takes ball four. It was over the plate but too low, and the Tigers get the first two on here in the fourth inning. Thompson moves to second. Rodriguez is at first. Second walk by Racic, and sure enough, we've got somebody uh, beginning to move out in the Yankee bullpen. Well, that may be Camire. I don't know. It's number 40, and he's not on the roster. Uh, here's number. Here's a pitch to Stanley. Line shot down the left field line. Foul. Just outside the line. Oof. That was close. Don't have a number on the U.S. City, is it? You've got it there, number 50. All right, or 40. That's Bob Kamier, K-A-M-M-E-Y-E-R. We're stalling a little bit on the mound right now. The catcher, Heath, has gone out to talk to Ray Fitch again. Well, they're pronouncing him on the intercom here as Kamier. And the conference continues at the mound. He's talking to Ray Fitch. It is just a one-strike count on Stanley. I'm sure that plate umpire Ken Kaiser is going to be taking a lot from the direction of the Tigers' dugout through the course of this ball game. Mickey wanted to get into it with him before the game began. At the time, uh, right after, Gates Brown had been ejected prior to the start of the second game. There's a set now by Rachel. Here's the pitch. High and wide, almost got away from Heath. Case you tuned into the second game a bit late. Ralph Hauk delayed coming out of the Tiger dugout when they had the meeting at home plate to uh, swap the lineup cards. And then he walked out and jerked the hand out 
And uh, handing uh, his lineup card to the plate umpire Kaiser turned right around and wait for the carbon copy. Up high for a ball to make these two and one. So after a moment or so, Kaiser started to walk toward the Tiger dugout, and Gates Brown came out, and the Tiger hitting coach uh, received the carbon copy of the Yankees lineup. And then had a few words, shoulder to shoulder, it wasn't very animated. All of a sudden, Kaiser gave the old circle, and he uh, kicked him out. There's a fly ball, the short center field coming on his river, still coming on. He won't get it, it drops in for a base hit. Thompson comes in to score. The throw to third. Out at third is Rodriguez. Aurelio trying to go from first to third on the short single of left center field. Cut down on the fine throw by Mickey Rivers. Rivers to Nettles to cut down Rodriguez, but the Tigers get on the board with a run here in the fourth inning. On the soft single by Mickey Stanley to left field, his second straight hit. One out now, run in, Stanley at first base. Thompson coming in to score on the single by Stanley. And Rodriguez trying to get to third. Didn't quite make it. Here's John Walkenfuss at the plate with Stanley first one out. Walkenfuss bounced out to the shortstop. Stanley his first time up. The pitch to Fuss. He takes it just outside, ball one. leading at first. The look there by Racy. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled into the upper deck behind the plate. Uh, Racy uh, gained some renown uh, for those of you who follow college basketball as a basketball player at the University of Arizona under Freddie Snowden down there. R-H-A-S-I-C-H. Now we've got time called an Art Fowler, the pitching coach of the Yankees, has come out for a conference with the pitchers. Still got K. Meyer loosening in the bullpen. Maybe just giving him a little more time. We've had a couple of meetings with the catcher and the young pitcher. Now Fowler is out there. There's no injury involved. He slaps his hands and heads back to the dugout. It's a 1 1 count on Walking Bus. Stanley at first. The stretch by Rasich. Here's the pitch. Swung on a bouncer over the mound. Charged by Stanley. He underhands the second for one. The relay to first. It is not in time. Safe at first. Close at first, but walking first was not doubled up. Well, there will be two down now with uh, Johnny B at first, and the batter will be Milk May. Ball was a high hopper right over the mound. Very difficult ball to get a double play on. May made the last out of the opening game as a pinch hitter. He walked his first time up in this game. Overcast here at Yankee Stadium now. They had uh, rain in Baltimore causing both fun of the Red Sox Orioles game. Inside he hit the dirt, almost hit him. May going down quickly on his back. The fans uh, seem to like it. I'll tell you what happened in the third inning, though. Uh, Nettles went down in a hurry on a ball that got away from Slayton. Now, a warning has been made by Kaiser to the dugout. Martin in the Yankee dugout. I cannot see Ralph in the Tiger dugout. We're at a bad angle. But Billy has threw both hands in the air in disgust at the plate umpire Kaiser because of the warning issue. He felt that this was in retaliation because of the meetings that have been held or whatever for the pitch that set down Nettles in the third inning. There's a strike called on May. Well, Nettles got up out of the dirt and hit a home run off the facing of the upper deck in right field. That's the difference in the ball game is three-run homer. Three to one, the Yankees lead. The one-one pitch. Swung on and popped in the air to short right field. Coming on late is Johnstone. He's there, makes the catch. And that's all for the Tigers. They pick up one run on a couple of hits and a walk. No errors. And one man is left on base after three and a half innings. It's New York 3, Detroit 1. When I traded in my old wagon for an economy one, all my buddies said I'd have to give up a lot. You know, rides, room, and comfort. Well, I 
I didn't give up. I got this Plymouth Valari wagon. I sure didn't give up big car rides. I didn't give up room for six. I didn't give up comfort. Oh, I did give up one thing when I bought my Valari wagon. A lot of trips to the gas station. Don't compromise when you economize. Although your mileage may vary, the EPA rates a one-barrel, six-cylinder Valari wagon with manual transmission at 25 miles per gallon highway, 18 city. Don't give up. Get a Plymouth Valari wagon, America's first choice in wagons over the past two years. Don't give up. For a great value on Plymouth Volaris, see your greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Well, a conversation between innings here, uh, between manager Billy Martin of the Yankees and the plate umpire Ken Kaiser, who had uh, obviously given a warning to both dugouts concerning the brushback pitch. And Billy wanted to come up and... Uh, Get an explanation as to why it lasts all that long, and we're ready to go here in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Yankees facing Tiger starter Jim Slayton. It'll be Reggie Jackson leading it off. The pitch to Reggie is taken outside for ball one. Jackson had the one hit in three trips in the opening game, bounced out the second his first time up against Slayton. He takes uh, ball two. Clayton has walked one. Hasn't struck out anybody. Yankees getting all three hits in that third inning. Singles by Heath and Johnstone, and they scored ahead of Nettles on the three-run homer. Low and inside, it's 3-0 and on Reggie. Clayton walking around a little bit out on the mound. Jim pitched an excellent ball game against the Yankees a week ago yesterday in Detroit. Ball four, Jackson draws a walk on four straight pitches, and now, before Gary Thomas and Bass, let's pause for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. This is America's great radio station, WJR Detroit. The forecast shower is ending tonight. For Monday, becoming partly sunny during the day, especially in the afternoon with a high temperature 78 to 81. For Independence Day, partly sunny through the day, warm with a high of 81 to 83. First time up. Jackson at first. Nobody down. Yankees in front, 3-1. to Reggie edging away, giving a bigger lead. He goes. The pitch is taken. That's swung on and fouled back into the sand. The last second, Thomason uh, took a cut. Bob Sykes, the Tiger left-hander, is beginning to loosen out on the Tiger bullpen. Reggie likes to run. There's the set by Slayton. Jackson leading, but he doesn't go. It's outside for a ball. Jackson has 11 stolen bases this season. He's been caught eight times. Randolph has been doing a lot of running until he became injured. Picked up uh, 16 stolen bases. Throw the first, and back is Jackson. Rivers uh, not doing as much running as he once did. Now Jackson goes. It's taken for a ball. The throw to second. He flies. He is out at second base. They cut him down, and that was on one hop to the glove of Wagner that time. But he was able to put the tag on Reggie. A count of two and one on Thomason now. Here's the lineup for pitch. Swung on, fly ball. This is to short center field. The floor with a late start coming in. Wagner going out. Wagner makes the catch, falls down, and hangs on to it. Good play by Peanut. Well, there are two down with the bases empty, and it'll be Damaso Garcia, who is seeing action in both games with this doubleheader at second base for the Yankees.
last year, hitting uh, 231. Had a hit and two trips in the opener. Pitch from Slayton is up high. Jim has won eight and lost four, the top winner on the Tiger Mound staff. Pitch to Garcia. He takes the strike. Yankees won the opener, three to two, coming from behind to pull out the win on a sacrifice fly by Chambliss in the eighth. Line drive cut by Dillard as he cruised to his left, kind of a soft minus, and that's all for the Yankees in the fourth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. After four innings of play, it's New York three, Detroit one. When I
Here's the pitch. Ron goes. It swung on and uh, missed. The ball dropped at the plate by Heath. And a stolen base for Ron LaFleur. That'll be his 27th steal of the year. And that stolen base by LaFleur will send a $25 gift certificate from Acme Sporting Goods to the Macomb Juvenile Home. Take the action challenge. If you find it select somewhere else, they'll give back the difference. LaFleur is second with one down. Here's the pitch to Peanut. He swings, bounces one to Stanley. Checks LaFleur is second. Throws the first. He's out. Uh, LaFleur is still at second, but with two down now, and Rusty Schaub will be the batter. Stanley has been busy in this inning. Flaggers have hit the ball with Stanley each time. All three who have batted. Staub had a hit in four trips in the opening game, drove in a run in the Tigers' first inning. He's one for two here in the nightcap. The pitch from Racich. Curve is in for a strike. Oh, big bender. From the left-handed to the left-hand hitting stop. Now the set, the pitch. Swung on and missed. Again, that big curve ball from Racich. Maybe his uh, fourth ball. It takes uh, quite a bend and was really dropping on Rusty. So he's quickly ahead to stop with a two strike count. Two out, LaFleur at second. Here's the pitch to stop. Really a little high, I guess, because the fans thought it was in. I did too. It looked like a pretty good pitch. Too good to take, but Rusty took it and it was ruled the ball. One and two on stop. Four doubleheaders in addition to the Tiger twin bill over in the majors today. Bob buckles out of the way of a fastball inside. We've got word on the ticker now that in the California-Texas game, Bert Campanaris was ejected from the game after fighting with pitcher Ken Brett of the Angels, who stayed in the ball game. Texas leads one nothing after an inning and a half. Line drive down the right field line. That'll bring in LaFleur. He scores. It bounces off the wall. Stop. Hits for second. Up for the ball is Johnstone, and Rusty holds it second. So Stop picks up another two-base hit. The Tigers get another run back and trail by a run three to two here in the fifth inning. who is in action out of the bullpen out there. It is now Sparky Lyle, no longer the rookie Kmeyer. So Staub on at second with a run-producing double. It's three to two Yankees now, and Thompson will be the batter. Racich looking in, getting the sign from Heath. Looks back at Staub. Here's the pitch. Way outside. Well, Campy Campanaris at it. Out to California with a pitcher of the Angels, Ken Brett. Number Campy and Larry McGrow back at 72. There's a pitch high to Thompson. And time is called. Here comes Billy Martin out. He's uh, trotting out to the mound. The Philly may be making a pitching change. Lyle does not take long to get ready. Sparky may be coming on right here. Martin walking slowly out of the mound, wearing his glasses. I believe they're the type of glasses, but uh, depending on the brightness, uh, they'll get a little darker. And the sign that was made, I thought, by Philly right there to call in Sparky. The key hasn't opened at all. Lyle, uh, Lyle now has... Uh, Walk back to pick up a jacket. And Lyle will come on, and the crowd is going to give the young Dave Racich some well-deserved applause here. As he held the Tigers in check, the Yankees desperate for some pitching help. Brought this young man up as a relief pitcher and gave him a start in his Major League debut. And he managed to hold off the Tigers to a degree. They have cut the Yankee lead to one run, three to two. Here on the top of the fifth inning. And with two down, Staub in scoring position at second base. The man that Philly goes to uh, when he really needs somebody to put out a fire, Sparky Lyle, will come out of the bullpen. 
Well, that didn't surprise you too much, did it, Paul? He just sort of figured it was coming out at all. Well, let's check the scores now. Cleveland beat Toronto in the first game 2 0. Alexander hit a home run for Cleveland in the 16th, and the winner was late. The loser was Lomantic. In the second game, the Blue Jays lead 1 0 at the end of three. Boston and Baltimore rained out. Chicago beat Minnesota in the first game 8 5. Now, Rogers, Smalley, and Rivera hit home runs in that game. And in the uh, second again, it's Chicago 2, Minnesota nothing at the end of a half inning. Schooner against uh, Jackson. Texas has a 1 nothing lead over the Californians at the end of two. This moment in the Texas second for that one run, that's his 13. And it's uh, Doc Ellis against uh, Brett in that one. Milwaukee 1, Seattle nothing at the end of one. Caldwell against Paul in that game. And Kansas City and Oakland in a doubleheader. Uh, the first game shows Oakland ahead at the end of uh, five innings, one to nothing. Gura against Langford. In the uh, National League, St. Louis beat Montreal in the first game, five to four. Simmons homer in the fourth with nobody on his ninth. The book of the winner and Simon the loser. Second game is not yet underway. New York and Pittsburgh, that game was postponed because of rain. In Los Angeles and Cincinnati, it's raining in Cincy. And uh, Los Angeles has the lead of five to three. They've completed five innings, so it is a regulation game if the rains don't stop. Ralph for L.A. Bonham uh, started for Cincinnati Bourbon in the fifth inning. Atlanta beat the Giants nine to seven. A Lamaster Clark and Murphy home, but in that game, a fight of blue took the loss, and the winner was still Negro. Philadelphia uh, leading Chicago. They're giving the Cubs all kind of problems. They're playing that game in Chicago. It's been raining off and on at Wrigley Field. And the Phillies have a 6 to nothing lead in the seventh inning. Cardinal hit a home run in the third with one on his second. San Diego ahead of Houston. That's 3-2. to two. The Padres lead in the seventh inning. Ashford of the Padres home with the fourth with nobody on his fifth. It's Perry for San Diego and Dixon on the mound for the Houston team. Well, Mr. Sparky Lyle. Uh, the left-hander has taken over now. He's ready to go, and so is Paul Carey. All right, Ernie, thank you. Uh, Lyle with six wins, one loss, seven saves to his credit, is coming out of the bullpen for the 29th time. Thompson at bat. Jason had two for two off the starter racing. A first pitch from Sparky is offside. Now, that'll make it a 3-0 count, as Lyle assumed a 2-0 count on Thompson. Here's the set. And the pitch to Jason. Up high, he draws a walk, and that walk will be charged to the outgoing pitcher, Rasich, which will uh, give him three bases on balls. Rasich, of course, responsible for both these men on base right now. Job at second, and Thompson at first. He allowed two runs, seven hits while he was in there. Not in long enough to claim uh, a victory should the Yankees maintain their edge, since he worked just four and two-thirds innings. Rodriguez... Now stepping into bat for the Tigers. Already a hitless in the doubleheader. He was 0 for 3 in the opener. Struck out in the first inning and walked in the fourth. Inside from Lyle, ball one. Already are hitting 269 at the moment. Sparky goes to the belt. Here's the pitch. Swung on and popped foul. It will be out of play behind first, back into the stand. Lyle came out of the bullpen early in yesterday's ball game. Tried to throw some strikes, and he did. He did the job for them. And worked two and a third innings against Detroit. And Tidrow took over and went the rest of the way. But Lyle, at least, they got the ball over the plate, something that both Andy Messerschmidt and Ken Clay were unable to do. There's a 1-1 pitch. Swung on. There's a base hit to left field. Staub round third. The ball on one hop to Thomas, and here comes Staub home. The throw all the way to the plate. He is out. <laughs> Rusty Staub trying to score from second base on a single to left field by Aurelio Rodriguez. Cuts down at the plate. On the throw by Gary Thomason. And that's all for the Tigers in the fifth inning. They almost tied it up, but couldn't quite. One run on three hits. Plus a walk, no errors. They lead two men on base, and after four and a half innings of play, it's the Yankees three and the Tigers two. Well, the 
the Tigers are running themselves out of an inning again as uh, Staub tried to score on that one and was cut down at the plate. Now, they had an earlier play where uh, Rodriguez was cut down in the fourth inning on a uh, drive to center field for a base hit, and uh, he tried to take third and was out at third base. So the Tigers having their troubles on the bases here this afternoon in game number two. If you missed the first game, the Yankees won it by a 3-2 count. Rose was started, relieved by Hiller, and Hiller took the loss. Gidry was the starter and winner in that first game, and Gossage came in to set down the Tigers in the ninth inning, 1-2-3, and preserve the 13th win for Ron Gidry, who is uh, leading the league in just about uh, every department. In fact, uh, leading both leagues in just about every department. It is 3-2 here, the Yankees leading, going to the last half of the fifth inning. Rookie catcher Mike Heath leading off in New York against Jim Clayton in the last of the fifth inning. Clayton delivers. It's a strike called on Heath. Mike single to right his first time up. He didn't play in the opening game. The wind up by Clayton. He delivers. A tapper foul just off behind the plate. Two strikes on Heath. Well, the Tigers almost tied the ball game up. Taking a chance uh, on Staub trying to score from second on a sharply hit ball to left field. One hop to the glove of Thomason. Pitch is outside. That was Clayton's fastball. One and two on Heath. He'll be followed by Stanley and Rivers here in the fifth inning for New York. Heath takes ball two, low and away. Now, most of the 50,000 plus that paid to see this doubleheader is still here for the wrap up of this second ball game. The wind up a 2-2 pitch. He is called out on strike. Now that's the first strikeout for Slayton. And it'll bring up Fred Stanley. Fred's had only three official trips in the doubleheader. No hits thus far. Bounced into a force out his first time up against Slayton. Pitch from Slayton is taken for a strike by Stanley. Well, the Tigers have out hit the Yankees eight to three, but trail it three to two here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Just outside, one and one now on Stanley. a ground ball down the third baseline backhanded by Rodriguez he guns the first he got it two away and that'll bring up Mickey Rivers the center of the controversy in the seventh inning of the opening game and he came into pinch hit if they fly ball down the right field line Mickey Stanley uh, quoted after the ball game as saying that he was interfered with by a fan that he had uh, every possibility of catching the ball had he not been interfered with and then lost track of the ball when he went racing in to argue the point with Ken Kaiser. There's a foul back up in the stands. And one of the Yankee, uh, or one of the cameramen here on the regular Yankee TV crew had a piece of videotape that was not shown at the time on television that indicated uh, that, indeed, a fan had reached over and interfered with the ball and with Stanley. Pitch is low and away for a ball. He did not say that it interfered with Stanley. That's what Mickey contended. He said it did, uh, that the fan did interfere with Stanley's ability to catch it. A little topper out toward the mound. Clayton throws the first. He gets mixed the quick. And the Yankees are down in order in the fifth inning after five innings of play. It's New York three, Detroit two. Say, folks, here's a tip on something new in Detroit. It's a doubleheader, too. A Major League Twin Bill. Park once and see both the Art Institute and the New Science Center. They're right across the street from each other in the Cultural Center. The Museum Science Center doubleheader is six days weekly, every day but Monday. Take the kids down for a couple of hours. Push all the buttons at the Science Center. See the overhead movie, Cosmos. Then look at the Art Institute pictures and snack in the Museum Cafe. As I say, Park just wants for both. Not a bad game plan, right?
Gene Elsie's Music for Moderns is a Detroit and Midwest tradition, an oasis of great jazz that combines the best of the new and some old chestnuts, too. It's a blending of good music and expert commentary that's an integral part of Saturday Night's The Thousand. Why not see and hear what the rave notices are all about? Join Gene Elsie Saturday nights at 6.30. He happens here on WJR Radio 76. This game is being brought to you by Labatt's. For beer at its finest, call for Labatt's. By marathon dealers and distributors, people who've got together to do it better. By the Greta Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealers, who've got Horizon Motor Trend's Car of the Year. By Champion Spark Plugs, you can't buy a better plug than Champion. By the Detroit News, for the first good news in sports every morning, read the new Detroit News AM edition. By City National Bank, where you can get combo checking. And by Little Caesars Pizza, a winner any way you slice it. Now, more Tiger baseball action with Ernie Harwell and Paul Carey. Mickey Stanley will lead off the sixth inning of the Tigers. The Tigers trying to come back after being down three zip on the three-run homer by Greg Nettles in the third inning. They trail by a run, three to two. Stanley takes a curve on the inside corner for a strike. Park Lyle in relief of the rookie starter Dave Rasich. Stanley is two for two. Double and a single. He cuts and misses. Two strikes on him. That's that slider of Sparky's. Perhaps has or may have the best in the business. He winds and delivers the two strikes. It's swung on a long fly ball down the left field line. It is hooking and it is foul back into the seat. Stanley had uh, contended, too, incidentally, that on a previous top foul by Rivers down the line, he had been, uh, his ability to catch the ball had been interfered with. Inside for a ball. So he was kind of doubly mad when the, the fly ball by Rivers wound up producing a couple of runs for the Yankees. One-two count on Stanley, leading off the sixth inning. The wind up by Lyle. Here's the pitch. Swung out a bouncer foul into the Tiger dugout. Interesting that the fans always go for those foul balls and the players always avoid them. The Yankees won the opener, three to two. And have taken two of the three games thus far in the series. They lead three to two here in the nightcap. The one-two pitch to Stanley. Inside. Mickey, with three hits in six trips in the doubleheader, has raised his batting average to 239 at the moment. A Lyle waiting on Stanley. Into the motion. They pitch to Mick. Swung out a fly ball. Lifted to right field. Moving to his left is Johnstone. He's there. He has it. And there's one down on the Tigers' sixth inning. That'll bring up Walking Fuss. John playing in left field today for the Tigers. This is his first start in left field this season. And he's 0 for 2 here in the nightcap. Steve Kemp missing a start for the first time this year. The wind up by Lyle. Here's the pitch. Check swing at the strike on the puck. May seem like a lot of Yankee fans here, but and that's true proportionately, but there's still a lot of Tiger fans in the audience. Inside for a ball, one and one on John. One of those uh, here for the weekend series, Bob Gorski from Detroit. Lyle's 1-1 one, one pitch. Ball two, low on the inside to John. Milt Wilcox will get the start in the opener of the two-game series with Toronto tomorrow night against Jim Clancy of the Jays. There's a foul back into the stand. Count even at two balls, two strikes on Walkenbush. 
will be Windsor night at Tiger Stadium tomorrow evening. Also a family night. And then a special tribute to Independence Day before the game on Tuesday night. Foul fly off first. It'll be out of play behind the dugout. He comes over giving chase, but it's well back into the stand. Tigers will be home for just four games. Two with Toronto and two with Cleveland on Wednesday and Thursday night. And they'll go to Texas for a weekend series uh, before the All-Star break and resume after the break on the west coast of Seattle. Will it wind up by Lyle? A swing and a foul over into the Tiger dugout. Knocked down by Mark Pittrich. Mark out in the outfield again before the ball game today. Extending that arm of his, uh, playing catch with John Hiller. And that's really what it is. He's not using a normal pitching motion. Not putting any velocity on the ball at all. Just loosening up. Pitching from or throwing, actually, from 90 to 120 feet. Of interest to the Tigers is what he can do from 60 feet, 6 inches. Here's the pitch. The walking bus, ground ball to the right side. Campbell backhands it. Lyle covering the race to the bag, and he's out at first pitch. Very close, but Lyle got there ahead of the slide by walking bus. And there are two down in a Tiger six inning. That'll bring up Milt May. Milt has walked and fly to right. Outfield uh, playing Milt pretty much straight up there, not playing him to full Lyle. Here's a pitch from Sparky. The curve is low. Lyle working quickly comes right back. Ball two outside the May. Up and the pitch from Lyle swung on and popped in the air near the plate. Heath in foul territory is calling for it. He makes the catch, and that's all for the Tigers. They go down one, two, three before Lyle here in the sixth inning. After five and a half innings, it's the Yankees three, the Tigers two. Then 200 fires were reported in the first 24 hours after the city's unionized firemen went out on strike yesterday. Democratic candidate for governor William Fitzgerald of Detroit has already picked up nearly $268,000 in matching state funds in his bid for his party's nomination. That's far more than any of his opponents had. Detroit's temperature with rain in the air, 63 degrees. This is Bill Smith, WJR News, reporting. Russell Isle on the hill to face the Tigers. Here on the seventh inning, Steve Dillard leading it off. Back of the mic, Ernie Harwell. And Steve hits a bombing ball, knocked down by Nettles at third. Throw to first, he is out. Another great play by Nettles, taking a double away from Dillard. Well, he's made a few in this series, and he made a few in the series back in Detroit. Nettles taking a two-base hit away from Steve Dillard. Here's Ron LaFleur now. He's 0 for 3. Struck out twice and bounced into a fourth. Lyle ended the game in the fifth inning, relieving the starting pitcher, Ray Ditch. Gave up a single, and since then, he's gotten the next four batters in order. Three to two, the score. The Yankees lead it. They won the first game over the Tigers by that score. Ball in close on Ron. Ball one, the count on LaFour. Seventh inning of the second game, one out and nobody on. Left-hander Lyle delivers. Here's a chopper hit toward third. Nettles has this one. Flips it over to Chambliss. He's out by a step and a half. Oh, they're two down the same way. Third to first. And Mark Wagner will bat for the Tigers. 50,449 paying to see this Sunday doubleheader in the Bronx. on the mound now to get his time from the rookie catcher, Mike Heath. There's a ball, oh, the former Major League catcher, Fran Healy, telling us that uh, 
Keith reminds him a lot of the catcher at the Texas, Jim Sunberg. Here's the pitch on the way. It's a strike call. One and one, the count on Wagner. Lyle winds and pitches. Mark it's a bombing ball up the middle. It's through for a hit. Garcia to his right couldn't get it. Fielded now by Rivers in center field. And Wagner has a two-out single. That is the ninth hit for the Tigers. The Yankees have only three, but they got all three of them in one inning. And uh, Nettles uh, climaxed that inning with a home run. That's how they got all three of their runs. The Tigers got one in the fourth and one in the fifth, but they've had trouble running the bases. And it's been costly to them. Here's Staub. He's out a single and a double and a bounce to first. He takes a Sparky Lyles flatter in for a strike. Lyle, a great man on endurance. He says he never goes near the trainer's room. The old arm just comes back game after game. He pitches. There's a fly ball into short left center. Coming in is uh, Thomas from the left fielder. He's got it. And the Tigers are out in the seventh with no runs on one hit, no errors, and they leave one. Here come the Yankees to bat. Last half of the seventh inning, second game. The Yanks three, the Tigers two. Can you afford to throw money away at the supermarket, in your car, where you bank? City National Bank knows every nickel counts. That's why there's a big difference between City National and those other banks that charge you for writing checks. Nobody, because nobody has got what City National Bank has got. City National Bank saves you money again with combo checking. Keep a minimum of $200 in checking or savings. You write all your checks without charge. All your checks without charge. Combo checking. No other bank in Michigan has it. No statement fees. No charge for checks. Don't throw your money away on annoying service charges on checks. Come on in and open a City National Bank charge-free combo checking account now. Also available at National Bank of Rochester and First Citizens Bank in Troy. Jackson will lead off for the Yankees in their seventh. The Yanks ahead to three to two. They got all three in the third. On a single by Heath, the fourth out by Stanley, and with two out, Johnstone single, and then uh, Nettles followed with a home run. Slayton uh, has uh, not allowed a runner hit except in that third inning. There's a pitch high to Reggie, ball one. The Tigers scored one in the fourth. On a single by Thompson, a walk to Rodriguez, and a single by Stanley. Then they got one in the fifth inning on a single by Dillard, a double by Stop. Here's a cut and a miss. And the big crowd of over 50,000 chanting Reggie now. Slayton steps off the back of the mound a little bit. Jackson out of the batter's box. Yankees took the opener three to two. Jim Slayton winds and pitches. Jackson takes a ball outside, a fastball. Two and one, the count on him. Outfield deep and straight away. Here's the pitch. He swings and misses. That was a slider in under the hand. Said two two, the count. Cincinnati's taking the lead away from the Dodgers in Cincinnati 7 to 5 in the eighth inning. Here's a ground ball to Dillard. Nice off for Steve. Throw to first to Thompson, and Jackson is out. One up and one down in the Yankee seventh. Here's Gary Thomason, who's gone over for two. plays him about the same way they played Reggie, straight up and deep. He takes a fastball that jams him ball one. 
San Diego leading Houston in the eighth inning, three to two. Here's a cut and a tip to the mid of May. One and one, the count on Thomason. Texas ahead of California, three nothing in the fourth. Milwaukee leads Seattle, one to nothing in the fourth inning. Boston and Baltimore rained out today in Baltimore. It's a ball in tight at the shoulder. Two and one, the count now. Garcia waiting at the on-deck circle in the Yankees' seventh. They've got the lead by one, a three to two over the Detroiters. Late in pitches, there's a strike above the knees, the fastball. Two to the count on him. Infield is uh, deep on Thomas, and here's the wind-up in the pit. He took the ball in close, it almost hit him. Oakland has a one nothing lead at Oakland over Kansas City. They're in the eighth inning there. Toronto leads Cleveland second again, one nothing in the sixth. The Indians won the first one, 2 nothing. Here's a ball, he walked him. It was in close. The third walk issued by Jim Slayton. runner for the Yankees since the Jackson walk leading off in the fourth inning. Tamaso Garcia, the batter now. Right-hand hitting uh, second baseman. One on and one out. Thompson uh, holding on the bag with Thomason. And uh, Garcia takes a breaking ball in for a strike. Yanks three, the Tigers two, seventh inning in New York. Fourth and final game of the series. The Yankees won the first game, so they lead in the series now. Two victories to one over the Tigers. There's a toss to first by Slayton, and uh, back in time is Thomason. So Garcia waits on a strike one delivery. And uh, takes another strike. That was a slider on the outside corner. Cloudy skies, a little of a bit of a breeze are blowing from right field toward left. Check of the sign by Slayton, ready to go to work again. He pitches, and it's a bump that's rolling down the first base side, and they're going to let it roll. It is now a foul ball and picked up foul. Well, he almost had it, but uh, Thompson at first base decided to let it roll. So Garcia is out, running foul on strike three. It'll be a strikeout. and all the way down to second. They have to bring him back. And Heath, the uh, young catcher, will be the batter. He started that three-run inning with a single. That was the first of the three Yankee hits. Next time up, uh, Slayton struck him out. Right hand about He opens his stance just slightly. Young man from Tampa. Holds the bat up and... Uh, Almost straight up and back. There's a pitch outside for ball. Slayton uh, checking his side now and then uh, decides he'll go to first base with a little toss. Thomason gets back safely. Outfield a little bit to left and deep. Uh, he takes a strike. One and one, they got on him. Next Tiger action will be at home at Tiger Stadium against the Toronto Blue Jays. Family night, we hope you'll be out for that one. Game time, 8 o'clock tomorrow. Also Wednesday night at the ballpark. Runner goes, the ball is swung on and missed. Here's the throw to second, and he is out at second base. Diller puts the tag on the infighting runner, Thomason. A good throw by May cuts him down, and the Yankees are retired. Nothing across in the, their seventh inning, and we go to the eighth. The Yanks three, the Tigers two. I bought an economy car. Nice little car. Of course, I had to give up big car ride. I just bought a smaller car, too. I gave up a lot of passenger room. But with prices going up and up, I figure you got to give up and up. Well, I didn't give up. I bought a new Plymouth Volari four-door. And I didn't give up the things I want. 
I got the big car ride Frank gave up, the room for six Harry gave up, plus the compact economy they did give up. So why didn't they buy a Valari? I give up. Don't compromise when you economize. Although your mileage may vary, the EPA rates a one-barrel, six-cylinder Valari four-door with manual transmission at 28 miles per gallon highway in 20 cities. Don't give up. Get a Plymouth Valari. For a great value on Plymouth Volare, see your greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer. This is Jim Dillon. Is your future in check? Buy United States savings bonds through the payroll savings plan. They're one smart move. This broadcast is made possible by the Detroit Baseball Club and the American League and is intended for the private use of our listening audience. Rebroadcast or the use of this play-by-play -play is prohibited unless prior consent is received from WJR Detroit, the Detroit Tiger Baseball Club, and the American League. The announcers for this broadcast are selected and employed by WJR Radio and the Detroit Tiger Baseball Club. Ernie? Well, it'll be a sparky Lyle trying to hold off the Tigers in the last couple of innings. Thompson will lead it off in the eighth. Uh, Rodriguez and Stanley will follow. Lyle entered the game in the fifth inning. Great pitch. The uh, rookie left-hander was the starter. Here's Jason at the plate. Now he's doubled and singled and drawn a base on ball. Two for two for Thompson in this game. Lyle winds and delivers. Here's a foul out of play. Yankees, three runs and three hits. They got all three runs and all three hits in one inning, the third. The Tigers have two runs and nine hits. Tigers have left seven on. The Yankees have left one man on base. It is a strike on the outside corner. Lyles, the slider, got over. Strike two on Jason. Trying to get it going on the Tiger eight. Need an instant run or two here, the Tigers do. Wind up by the left hander. He pitches. There's a ball outside. He gave him a hook. One and two. The count on Jason Thompson. Rodriguez waiting on deck. Outfield deep straight away. The infield back all the way around. The wind up of the pitch on the way. He swings and lifts a fly ball to left field. Should be caught. Thomason is under it. He has it. And there's one away. Here's Rodriguez. He had a strikeout, a walk, and a single. He played in the fifth inning on the single star, but tried to score from second base and was cut down on the throw from the outfield. Rodriguez himself was cut down on a throw from center field to third base in the fourth inning. Trying to go from first to third on a single. The single that he scored Thompson. California, Texas still leading the Angels 3-0 there in the fifth inning. Parky Lyle into motion, delivers, and Rodriguez takes a fastball down around the ankles. Ball one. Really are having one of his the best seasons with a stick. Playing mostly against left-hand pitching. Takes a high curve, 2 and 0 on the radio Rodriguez. One out, nobody on, eighth inning. Here it comes. He swings and misses. Semi speed pitch from the Sparky Lyle. 2 and 1, they count on him. In the National League, the Phillies lead the Cubs in the eighth inning, 6 to 3 in Chicago. Lyle delivers. Here's a fly ball to right field. It'll drop in for a base hit in front of Jay Johnstone, and Rodriguez has another hit. Man on, and Mickey Stanley will be the batter. That is the 10th hit for the Tigers. 
seven more than the Yankee batters have, but the Yankees lead to three to two. Here's Stanley with a single and a double on the fly to right. Bob Thompson, Rodriguez, and Stanley in the middle part of the batting order. That's from the third slot down through three, four, five, and six. Each with two hits. Wagner has a hit and Dillard has a hit. Stanley takes a strike on the inside corner from the left-hand relief base of the Yankees' Sparky Lyle. Sparky turned the baseball to get out of the pottery business. He was a potter in Pennsylvania. Here's a swing and a foul off the mid of Heath. Strike two, the count on Stanley. Stanley's holding on the bag over there first base with Rodriguez. In the second game at Minnesota, the Twins are beating the White Sox 5-2 in the third. The Cardinal won the opener 8-5. Stanley takes the ball. It's almost uh, hit him in too close. One ball, two strikes to count on Mickey. Not quite ready to get back in there now. Yankees lead it three to two in the eighth inning. The Tigers have a man out and the man out. Lyle steps, kicks, delivers. Strike called, and he's out of there on strike. Stanley knew it and uh, walked quickly back to the dugout. Walking first will be the batter. First strikeout for Sparky Lyle. Watkins Fuzz has hit the ball on the ground three times. He's 0 for 3. 3-2, three Yankees lead. They won the first game by that score. There's a ball in low on John Watkins Fuzz. Outfield is deep. They've been around the left on John. The infield back, they can play the ground ball to second or first. In this uh, two-out, one-man-on situation, Lyle sets and pitches. Here's a cut and a miss. One and one on Watkins Cross. Stay tuned for the scoreboard show with Paul Carey when the game's over. Paul will have all the scores and details for you. He swings and fouls it away. Out of play, back of the plate. Now, Lyle didn't like that ball that the umpire Ken Kaiser put in play. Once another, Mil Milcott will pitch it for the Tigers Monday night against Jim Clancy of the Blue Jays. And on Tuesday, it'll be Steve Baker against Baylor Moore. Wednesday night and family night tomorrow at Tiger Stadium. Set, Lyle ready, delivers. Here's a foul out of play off the mid of the catcher heat. Those in the Yankee dugout. Billy Martin grabs it. Three runs, three hits for New York. They've made no errors. The Tigers have two runs on ten hits, and they've made no errors. Lyle ready to pitch again. The one-two count on Watkins. Plus. Here it is. He swings on the ground ball. It's a Stanley. It's short. He bobbles it, picks it up. So to second, they got Rodriguez. That retires the Tigers. No runs, a one hit, no errors. One man left. We go to the last half of the eighth inning. Yankees three, Detroit two. One of baseball's historic events occurred in the 56 series when Don Larson of the Yankees drew the first perfect game in series competition. Now in the Labatt's Baseball Trivia Quiz, can you remember the Dodger pitcher who opposed Larson? It's a name you should remember. And here's something else to remember. Remember Labatt. Yes, fans, Labatt's is beer at its finest, a very special brew imported fresh from Canada. When it's time for beer, remember Labatt's, the clear water, blue sky taste of Canada beer, brewed in Canada since 1828. Now the answer. After beating the Yanks in the series opener, Sal Magley pitched against Larson in game five. The barber gave up only five hits in eight innings, allowing just two runs. Good, but not good enough on that historic day. 
our pleasure as always in the Labatt's Baseball Trivia Quiz, brought to you by Labatt Importers, Amherst, New York. Clayton, who has uh, pitched a strong game, only one pitch has cost him that uh, home run that uh, Nettles hit in the third inning. Going all three of the Yankee runs, and they lead the three to two over Clayton and the Tigers. The New Yorkers coming to bat in the eighth inning. Keith, who was at the plate when uh, Thomason was cut down trying to steal, will lead it off in the Yankee eighth. It'll be Heath, Stanley, and then they go to the top of the batting order, Nicky River. A final Cincinnati hung on and beat Los Angeles seven to six. Cincinnati seven to Dodgers six. As the line drive right to Dillard for the out, one pitch and one away in the Yankee eighth inning. Stanley will be the batter. Well, the winning pitcher there for uh, Cincinnati, Rao, takes the loss at forty six thousand in Cincinnati, forty six thousand oh sixty seven. Foster hit a home run, his 17th. Auerbach hit a home run. His second, both for the Cincinnati Reds. There's a strike called on Stanley. Reds rallied for four runs on those two home runs in the seventh inning. Fred Stanley waits, now swings it, a drive to right center field. May get up the alley. Here comes the floor over, can't get it, plays it on one up, and Stanley... Has a long single to right center. That will be the fourth hit for the Yankees and their first hit since the third inning. Well, here's a man uh, who a lot of people here in Yankee Stadium say makes it happen for the Yankees. Mickey Rivers. He made it happen in the first game with a seventh inning double on a very controversial play. And he's batting now in the lead out spot with a man on and the man out in the eighth inning. There's a cut and a ground foul hit over toward the Yankee dugout. Rivers in this game is fly to sit a foul to first and bounced out to the pitcher. Kansas City has the lead at Oakland uh, over the Oakland A's four to one in the eighth inning. Rivers, a little left hand batting speed at the plate, and he takes the ball in close. One and one, the count on Rivers. Thompson holding on the bag with Fred Stanley over their first base. Yankees lead the Tigers three to two, eighth inning. They won the first game from the Tigers three to two. Here's a ball outside, a high, hard one. Two and one, the count on Rivers. Now Mickey leaning in, but Slayton goes to first base with it, and Sammy's right there on the bag. Sets the pitch, and Rivers swings and pops one foul out of play. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Mark Avery drives the music home in the afternoon music hall, Monday through Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock here on the Goodwill Station. WJR Detroit, Radio 76. Uh, back in the batter's box now. 2-2 two, two the count on Mickey. Slayton pitches. Here's a chopper hit on the ground at Dillard. He goes to second. They get the front man Stanley and Rivers is safe on the fourth out. That'll make it two down with a man on and Jay Johnstone, the uh, right, the left hand batting right fielder, steps up. Jay has uh, fly to left, singled and the foul to the catcher. Two Yankees lead eighth inning. They won the opener three to two. It's a pitch out, but Rivers is hanging on at first base. Ball one.
Johnstone uh, stands deep and uh, spreads out of the place. A little flip over to first to Thompson. Rivers back safely. Slayton to the set position. Rivers draws another throw at first. He's back standing up. Home run by Nettles is the story of this game. The Yankees lead 3-2, eighth inning. There's a fly ball into short left center. LaFleur coming over. Rocket Fuss is coming over. LaFleur crosses in front and makes the catch for the final out of the Yankee eight. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left for New York. We go to the ninth inning. New York three, Detroit two. <laughs> You know, there's a special additive at your nearby marathon station. Something that can add value to your life and the life of your car. Something you can get only at your marathon station. What it is, is your marathon man. Because your marathon man is somebody who believes it's not old-fashioned to give people what they pay for, but a little bit more. He's there to do it better, and do it the way he'd want it done if he were you. If you don't already know him, well, you really ought to. Radio 76 salutes Ronald Malanga, recently appointed administrator of finance and budget activities for the General Motors Industrial Relations staff. Right turning on top, the Yankees make a change in their outfield. Paul Blair replaces Jay Johnstone. Well, the Tigers uh, come in now to face... Parker Lyle in the ninth inning. The Yankees won the first game 3-2. to two. They leave the second game in the ninth 3-2. to two. Scheduled batters, Milk May, Steve Dillard, and Ron LaFleur. The uh, eighth and ninth batters, and then the top of the batting order. May has walked, fly to right, and uh, fouled to the catcher so far. Left-hander against the left-hander to start it off. The outfield is shallow on May. More shallow than most outfields play him, and they're playing him just about straight away. Parky Lyle goes into action, delivers, and May swings and fouls it on the screen, back of the plate. Lyle, a great exponent of the slider. He's got a couple of sliders. He throws the slider about 80% of the time. Sparky uh, looks in to get his sign from Heath, goes into action again. And the pitch is swung on and fouled away in the seat. Well, it used to be a joke that Jack Benny owned an old Maxwell, but it's no joke for Sparky Lyle. He's got a 1923 Maxwell. His pride and joy. Strike two pitch now to May. Swing and a bounding ball up the middle. It'll be a hit. The Tigers get a man on to start the ninth inning. A ground single through the box. Here comes Billy Martin out. Dillard is the next batter. Billy has gossiped the right-hander throwing in the bullpen. May leads off in the ninth with a single through the box off the left-hander. And that's going to be all for Sparky. The Goose is coming in again. He came in in the first game in the ninth inning and did a relief job against the Tigers. After relieving uh, Gidry, Gossage uh, came in in that ninth inning and sent the Tigers down one, two, three. So Martin is calling on him once again. Well, Rich Gossage picked up his 12th save in the opening game, relieving Gidry to work the ninth inning as Gidry uh, won his... 13th consecutive uh, game. And now Gossage, uh, who throws a lot of flame, is coming out of the bullpen again. A big right-hander. Tigers have Steve Dillard uh, scheduled as the next Tiger batter, pending a change by Ralph House. Well, Lyle entered the ball game with two outs. 
in the fifth inning. Relieving the rookie starter, Dave Rasich, making his first major league appearance. And Lyle uh, proceeded to walk, or complete a walk, to Jason Thompson. He gave up a hit to Aurelio Rodriguez, but on the play, Rusty Saab, attempting to score from second, was cut down at the plate on an inning-ending uh, play. Uh, cut down by left fielder Gary Thomason. Uh, Lyle was out of the fifth inning. And from that point on, he didn't allow a run. He has given up three hits while in there. Uh, Sparky working three and a third inning. And pitching to one man here in the ninth inning. So the big right-hander, who uh, was a fireman of the year in the American League with the Chicago White Sox, then went to the Pirates, had success there with Chuck Tanner as his relief pitcher. Now picked up as a free agent by the Yankees, will take over once again. He has, as I say, 12 saves as a result of picking up another one in the opening game. His record, however, shows three wins against seven defeats. We're getting the indication now from Ken Kaiser, the plate umpire, that Steve Kemp, who has missed the start here in the nightcap, the only game he has not started this year for the Tigers, will come in to pinch hit for Steve Dillard. So Dillard, uh, while he was in there, was one for three. But with a right-hander, Gossage taking over the mound, the Tigers will counter by using the left fielder, Steve Kemp, in a pinch hitting role with May at first and nobody down here in the ninth inning. For floor to follow here in the ninth. Lyle is, uh, stands right now to win this ball game. And he cannot be a losing pitcher. He's responsible for the one man on May at first base. Gossage says he is uh, ready to go, walks back off the mound, has a word with Fred Stanley and uh, his second baseman, Donaldson Garcia. And Kemp has been announced as a pinch hitter for the Tigers. Ernie? Well, uh, Kemp about ready to step in. He's uh, swinging the bat uh, aside of the plate right now. And Gossage is uh, back up on the mound, ready for him to move in there and uh, bat against him. Steve, in the first game, had a single, struck out, lined into a double play, and fly to left field. Rich Gossage on the mound, pitching to Steve Kemp. The Tigers have a man at first base. And nobody down. Whitaker running for May over at first. Here's a pitch. It is a ball outside. I'll put Whitaker on first base, running for Milton May, who started the inning with a single. Tigers trail by a run at 3-2. to two. Ninth inning, second game of the doubleheader. Yankees won the open at 3-2. to two. He takes a high one. The ball to the count on Kemp. He squares the box and takes a fastball above the knees. Didn't offer on it. Two and one, the count on Kemp. LaFleur waiting on deck. Chandler's trying to keep Whitaker close at first base, the pinch runner. Now Gossage sets and pitches, and Kemp swings and fouls it away. That's in the seats on the third base side. Two, two, the count on Steve. Outfield is playing him toward left. Whitaker on first base, ninth inning. Nobody out, waiting on a 2-2 pitch. Here it comes. Kemp takes a ball outside. He just missed the outside corner. Full count on him now. And Gossage just steps off the mound to rub up the baseball. Ninth inning, the Tigers need one to try and two to go ahead. Three runs, four hits, no errors to New York. The short two runs, 11 hits and no errors. Set and the pitch. He swings at the bounding ball to left. It'll be a hit. Whitaker goes to second base and holds there. And the Tigers have two men on and nobody down. Ron LaFleur will be the next Detroit batter. Kemp comes through with a pinch single to left. Whitaker moving to second base. And LaFleur, the top of the batting order, steps up. He's about a hit in this game. He struck out twice, hit into fourth, and then bounded out to third. A 
Well, they're looking for the bunt from Ron. Chambers and Nettles in close to the corners. Whitaker on second. Kip can get a big lead uh, off first because Chambers is playing in front of him. And LaFleur waiting at the plate on the hard-throwing reliever, Gossage. He squares the bunt and takes a high, hard one, ball one. Tigers trail by a run. A three to two, ninth inning. They've got two men on and nobody down. They've had the runners on the bases. They've just not been able to push them in. Now the floor backs away. A high pitch again. A type of pitch that the, the pitcher will throw to keep that man from laying the ball down. High and tight, a fastball. Here comes Nettles in to talk with Gossage for a moment, and he wants to go out and get in on the conversation. Stanley comes over and says something to his second base partner, Garcia. Man on first, Kemp. Man on second, Whitaker. The conference is over. Ball two, the count on the floor. Nobody down. 3-2 Yankees, ninth inning. Gossage ready, delivers, and it is a ball in too close on Ron LaFleur. Three and all, the count on him. Nettles is still in close, now backs up the step at the end of grass. And LaFleur waits on a 3-0 delivery. Here it comes. He's taking it to strike. Three and one, the count on Ron. Wagner waiting on deck. Now field straight up. Now Gossage gets his sign, pitches again. There's a fastball high, and it's a walk. The bases are loaded. LaFleur goes to first, Kemp to second, Whitaker to third. Wagner has been called back, and Mankowski, the left-hand batting infielder, will be inserted as a pinch hitter. Gossage issues a walk to the floor to load the bases. The Tigers trail by a run. They've got three men on. Nobody out. And here's Mankowski, who did not see service in the opening game. Bill batting 304, three home runs, and 13 runs by the And the Yankee infield up about halfway the outfield straight away. Staub is on deck. Gossage pitching with the bases loaded and nobody down. He winds and delivers. Here's a ball low to Mankowski. And here comes Billy Martin out of the dugout. He has nobody at work in the bullpen at the moment. This is just a calm him down situation. Keith goes out to uh, meet with the pitcher and the manager. Ball on the count on Mankowski. The Tigers lost the first game 3-2. to two. They trail in the ninth inning of the second game 3-2. to two. LaFleur at first, Kemp at second. Whitaker, the pinch runner at third base. Nobody down in the ninth. And now we're ready to resume action. The windup and the pitch. Mankowski swings and misses. He fed him a fastball in close to the letters. One and one, the count on Mankowski. 3-2, Yankees ahead. Here's the pitch. He takes the ball outside. 2 and one Gossage going to the speed now. Right-hander ready. Winds and pitches. There's a cut and a miss. He's just firing the ball past Mankowski. One and two of the count on Phil. Left hand about it. Digging in again. Here's the pitch on the way. He swings and fouls it off. Got a piece of it. Back to the screen. 3-2, Yankees lead. The Tigers trying to get even a go-ahead in the ninth inning. They trail by that one-run margin. But nobody out, and the base is loaded. Now they wind up and the pitch. Swing and a foul out of play. New supply baseball is brought out to Ken Kaiser, the plate umpire. Three men on for the Tigers. Nobody out. Gossage checks his sign with Heath. Here's a pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Mankowski goes down swinging. And here comes Rusty Stoff. 
Rusty with a single and a double. He bounced to first. He's fly to left. He has two hits and four trips. Tigers have left eight runners in this game. The Yankees have left only two. That's the story of the game. The Yankees lead at three to two. Dobbs takes a ball in close. Ball one on Rusty. Whitaker at third, Kemp at second, LaFleur at first. Ninth inning, Yankees lead to three to two. Now Rusty's trying to slow down Gossage a little bit. He's back in the batter's box. Here's the pitch. It's a strike call. One and one on the Tigers designated hitter Rusty stop. He cuts in this a fly ball to left field, not very deep. Thomason is there. Here's a tag by Whitaker. The catch is made. Whitaker coming home. He scores, and the game is tied. Three to three in the ninth inning. Stop. It's a fly to Thomason in normal depth left field. Whitaker tags at third and scores after the catch. The other two runners hold on. They are two on and two out. The game is three to three in the ninth inning. And now Jason Thompson will be the Tiger batter. Staub gets his second RBI in this game. And the Thompson steps in. He's had a double, a single, a walk, and a fly to left. Three, it's the ninth inning. A time call. Jason not quite ready. He wants to move the umpire in the middle, Bill Hallis, away from the left field side of the second base over onto the other side. Gossage steps and pitches. Here's a ball in tight. He's almost to have that one get past him. Ball on the count on Jason Thompson. Outfield deep and straight away. The infield can play back now with two down. He takes the ball very wide. Two and oh, the count on Jason. The Deuce, Rich Gossage on the mound. Tigers have scored a run to tie the game in the night. He pitches. Here's a ground ball to second. Garcia has it, throw to first, and the inning is over. Up the Tigers are going to run to tie the game. In the ninth inning, one run, two hits, no errors, two are left. We go to the last half tonight. The Yankees come in the bat. Tigers three, New York three. There are two things I remember about 58. I spent more on oil from my hair than on oil from a car. And about the first shaving. You can buy a better product from Champion. It's also the year I started using Champions. Now in 66, I remember two more things. A silver Corvette and a redhead named Georgette. No matter where you are, it's Champion. This year I got myself a Chevy wagon and four more things to remember. Billy Jean, Billy Joe, Billy Jean, and Billy Bob. Now, I've had a lot of different kinds of Chevys over the years. But one kind of spark plug, champion. You can't buy a better truck for any kind of car than champion. Champion. You can't buy a better truck no matter where you are than champion. Champion number one in the world. Number one in your car. Did I forget someone? Did I forget Billy Jack? The Tigers making some changes now. Well, the Yankees coming about in the ninth inning. Parrish will be the new catcher replacing May, who left for the pinch runner. Whitaker will stay in and play second base. Trammell will go to shortstop, replacing Wagner, who left for a pinch batter. So those are the changes. Trammell at shortstop, Whitaker at second, and the Parrish behind the bat. Slayton on the mound, and uh, he'll be facing Nettles, Stamblis, and Jackson as the... Leading the Indians in the eighth inning, three to one in the second game. Cleveland beats the Blue Jays in the first game, two to nothing. 
Uh, Nettles is stepping in. We're about ready to uh, go to action now in the last half of the ninth inning in New York. Yankees won the first game 3-2. And the second game is tied 3-3 in the ninth inning. He takes a strike call. Clayton started him with a curve. Clayton delivers and Nettles looks at a ball outside. A one and one the count on Greg. Left hand about waiting. Here it comes. He takes a curve. It stays away. That was a let up curve ball. Two and one. San Diego beat Houston. That final's been posted here. Six to two. San Diego six. Houston two. Final score. Here's a pitch. He swings and bounces back. Up the mezzanine. Right above us. Two two the count. Tigers, three runs, 12 hits, no errors. Yankees, three runs, four hits, no errors. We're in the last half of the ninth inning. Nettles leading it off for New York. Waiting on a 2-2 delivery. He cuts and strikes out. Got him on an outside pitch. Clayton gets his third strikeout of the afternoon. Here's Chris Chambliss, who has popped to shortstop. Fly to left. And fly to center, 0 for 3. Left hand batting first baseman waiting. And he takes the strike. Clayton got a fastball in. Outfield deep straight away on Chambliss. He cuts and fouls it on the screen right down below our booth here at Yankee Stadium. Strike 2, the count on Chris. Next Tiger action tomorrow night, Wednesday night, and family night at Tiger Stadium, the Tigers against Toronto. Now the motion, the pitch. He takes the ball outside. Parrish working behind the bat now gives the sign to Slayton. Chambliss takes, it's outside, 2-2. Second game, it's the Montreal, Montreal 2, St. Louis 2 in the fifth inning. Cardinals beat him in the first game 5-4. There's a bounding ball up the middle, and Whitaker drives it. Here's the throw to first to Thompson. He's out. A great play by Lou Whitaker. Oh, the Yankees are going to steam a little bit on that one. Uh, they thought that the batter Chambers had beaten it out. Here comes Billy Martin now. He's putting up an argument with Mike Riley over there at first base. They are two down, nobody on, and Reggie Jackson will be the Yankee batter. Great play by Whitaker. Billy continues to argue with the umpire, Riley. So here's Reggie Jackson stepping in with two down of the ninth inning. The bases empty. The game tied 3-3. Reggie has bounced to second, drawn a walk, and bounced to second again. Low curve is over, but it's high. Ball one on Jackson. 3-3 three, three tie. Second game, ninth inning. to the ball outside. It's 2-0, and oh, the count on Jackson. Outfield deep, pulled around the right. The infield in that direction also, and very deep. Wind up in the pitch. Jackson cuts and misses. Two balls, one strike to count. Clayton ready, six and kneels. Jackson swings, fly ball, left field down the line. May go foul in the seat. Yep, that's what's going to happen. It'll be a foul out of play. Two two, the count on Reggie. Walking pass pulled way over towards center field. He would have had a long run for that one had it been catchable. 
Final from Oakland, uh, Kansas City got four runs in the eighth inning to beat Oakland four to two. Page had the game's only home run. That's the first of a doubleheader. Now the pitch. Jackson cuts the line drive base hit to left field. A two-out single by Reggie Jackson. Keeps the Yankees alive in this 3-3 three -three tie in the ninth and brings to bat Thomason, the outfielder. Gary Thomason, the left fielder. He fly to left, pops the second, and draw the base on ball. That's the fifth hit off plate. Got a curve over. Thompson trying to keep uh, Reggie Jackson close at first base. Suspicious of uh, Reggie's motives down there. Reggie leads off a little bit. Thomason waiting at the plate. And the pitch is a tight call and above the knees, a fastball. And Mr. Kaiser, the plate umpire, got the old family look that time from uh, Thomason. Strike two, the count on Thomason. Left-handed batter steps in again. Slayton looking him over. Jackson leading off the bag at first base. And the pitch, he takes a ball outside. The ball pops out of the mid of Parrish, right in front of him. Behind the plate, and Jackson holds on. One and two, the count on Thomason. Game tied 3-3, three, three, ninth inning. The Yankees at bat. They've got a man on and two down. Yankees won the opening game three to two. One two pitch on the way. He takes the ball in close two two. The count on Thomas. Grace has thrown up his pitching face a little bit now. Thomas back in the batter's box. It's a two two count on him. Here goes Jackson. The pitch is swung on. There's a drive to right field. It's gone. A home run. A two-run homer. And the Yankees win it in the ninth inning by a score of 5-3. to three. In the ninth for New York, two runs on the two hits. There were no Tiger errors. Nobody left on base. And the final score in the second game, New York 5 and Detroit 3. WJR Director of Fine Arts, Carl Hawk. Concert pianist and musicologist is your resident guide to Adventures in Good Music, a daily exploration of symphonic opera, chamber music, oratorios, and tone poems that contribute to the world's treasure chest of great performances and the people responsible for them. Discussed in a personal way that makes listening and learning a daily delight, Adventures in Good Music. We celebrate the birthday of Eva Vivaldi or usher in a new season with compositions written in tribute to a special time of the year. Flirtatious notes, a cheer for the Irish, and anthems incorporated. Those are but a few of the program themes brought to new light by Dr. Hawks. Broaden your musical horizons with Adventures in Good Music. Afternoons at 210 here on WJR Radio 76. Tom Campbell, Gene Healy, and Bill Nordstrom update your morning with the news you need to know for your day. Join them here on WJR Radio 76. Well, what do you say after being uh, bombed by the Bronx Bombers again? The Yankees winning both ends of this Sunday doubleheader to take three out of four over the weekend series. A couple of swings with that. All that uh, the Yankees needed here in the ninth cap. A three-run homer by Greg Nettles in the third inning. And then with two outs and Reggie Jackson aboard, Gary Thomason drove a home run deep into the seats in right field to wrap up a 5-3 to three Yankee victory in the ninth cap. Five runs. Six hits, no errors for the Yankees. They left only two men on base. The Tigers had three runs, had 12 hits, no errors, and a 10 on base. Clayton goes all the way. 
and sustains his fifth loss against eight wins. Rich Gossage, who has come on as the third pitcher for New York in the ninth inning, lines up the pitcher of record and the winner for New York. Gossage now with four wins, seven defeats. The second game took two hours and 24 minutes. It's been a war today here at Yankee Stadium, and the Tigers wound up losing both times. In the uh, third inning, Nettles followed singles by Mike Heath and Jay Johnstone with his 14th home run of the year, a towering blast off of facing the upper deck in right field. To give the Yankees a 3 to nothing lead, the Tigers chipped away, came back with a run in the fourth inning. A single by Mickey Stanley brought in that run. In the fifth, Rusty Saab doubled it to score the second Tiger run of the ball game, but Saab was out of the plate, attempting to score on a single by Aurelio Rodriguez to end the fifth inning. In the ninth inning, the Tigers had a great opportunity to not only catch up but go ahead, as the first three men reached base on singles by Milt May, pinch hitter Steve Kemp, and a walk to Ron LaFleur. Bill Mankowski, however, struck out as a pinch hitter. Rusty Saab got the run in that tied the game on a sacrifice fly before Jason Thompson ended the inning bouncing out the second. And then the Yankees won it on a two-out single by Jackson, followed by Thomason's two-run home run. I'll be back with more on this doubleheader from New York. No, I won't either. We've already wrapped it up. That's right. We've uh, This was the end of the ninth inning. In the opening game, in case you tuned in late, the Yankees beat the Tigers 3-2 on a controversial play in the seventh inning. Dave Rosemont had them shut out over six innings with a 2-0 Tiger lead. Then pinch hitter Mickey Rivers, with a man on at first base, came up, lost to the fly ball to right field that uh, apparently was touched by a fan. Mickey Stanley, the Tiger right fielder, complaining that he had been interfered with. Not only he had the ball been touched, but Stanley, in reaching for the ball, had been touched by the fan. He lost track of the ball, raced in to argue the point with third, or first base umpire Ken Kaiser. In the meantime, two runs scored as Rivers circled the bases to tie the ball game. And then in the eighth inning, a sacrifice fly by Chris Chambliss broke the tie and gave the Yankees the victory. As John Hiller, who had come on relieving Rosemay in the seventh, after that controversial play involving Rivers, wound up the losing pitcher, his fourth loss against six wins. And Ron Gidrick, with some help in the ninth inning from Rich, Rich Gossage, got to his 13th consecutive victory. Gossage coming on to set down the side in order in the ninth inning for his 12th save. So Gossage gets a save in the opener and a win in the nightcap. The totals in the opening game for New York, three runs, eight hits, two errors. For Detroit, two runs, six hits, and one error. The Tigers... Had picked up a home run in that uh, first game by Jason Thompson, a blow over the center field fence. So it's been a bad afternoon for the Tigers and a bad trip to uh, New York City and not a particularly good trip all the way around. The Tigers dropped three out of five to the Indians in Cleveland, come to New York and dropped four, or rather dropped three out of four to the Yankees. So the Tigers lose six of the nine games on this road trip. They come home now to take on the Toronto Blue Jays in the first of two games tomorrow night when Milt Wilcox goes against Jim Clancy. Our broadcast coverage tomorrow from Tiger Stadium will begin at 7.45 with Ernie Harwell's pregame program. That's the story of a long day at Yankee Stadium. Now for Ernie Harwell, this is Paul Terry saying so long. Once again, the final scores. In the opening game, it was the Yankees 3, the Tigers 2. In the nightcap, New York 5, Detroit 3. <laughs> been listening to Detroit Tiger Baseball 1978. Brought to you by Labatt. For beer at its finest, call for Labatt. Canada's number one beer. By your marathon dealers and marathon distributors. People who got together to do it better. By your greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealers who got Horizon, Motor Trend Magazine's Car of the Year. By Champion Spark Plus. Treat your car to a fresh set of champions. They're the world's number one seller. And you can't buy a better plug than champion. Buy the Detroit News. For the first good news in sports every morning, read the Detroit News AM edition at newsstands at 6.30 every morning. Buy City National Bank, where you can get combo checking, two ways to check without charges. And buy Little Caesars Pizza, a winner any way you slice it.
the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. What to do during a rainstorm? Look for some sun glow. This is Ernie Harwell for Sun Glow Pop. If you've been rained out recently, get yourself a little sun glow. Sun Glow Pop, the radiant refreshment. Sun Glow comes in 11 luscious flavors. Cola, orange, root beer, cherry, grape, tonic, grapefruit, punch, soda, ginger ale, and lemon lime. Available in cans or returnable liter bottles. It's refreshing, delicious, sparkling. So in any weather, remember that Sun Glow brightens up the whole day. And now something new from Sun Glow. Sun Glow introduces a glass of lemonade in a can. Sun Glow's delicious new lemonade comes in a can, ready to drink. There's no mixing, no stirring, no fuss. Just the pure, natural flavor of lemons, enriched with vitamin C and ready to drink. Sun Glow Lemonade is non-carbonated and comes in convenient six-packs. Perfect for hot summer days, for picnics, barbecues, and, of course, baseball. Available in the soft drink section at all stores. Welcome to the Paul Carey Scoreboard Show, brought to you by Denny's Restaurant, serving you throughout the country 24 hours a day. And now for the scores and a resume of the action of today's baseball games. Back to the stadium and Paul Carey. Again from Yankee Stadium, where today the Tigers lost a doubleheader to the Yankees. Let's check the scoreboard in the National League. One doubleheader. At Montreal, the Cardinals won the opening game 5-4. to four, Five runs, nine hits, one error for St. Louis. For Montreal, four runs, five hits, no errors. Pete Vukovic had the win uh, with Littell helping out. Vukovic is now on six and dropped five. Woody Fryman, the loser, his six. He's won three times. Ted Simmons homered for the Cards his ninth of the year. The second game after five innings of play at the 2-2 tie, Urea going to the cards against Twitchell of Montreal. Rain at Pittsburgh caused the postponement of the Pirates' New York Mets game. At Cincinnati, the Reds held on to score a 7-6 victory over the Dodgers. Seven runs, 11 hits, one error for Cincinnati, 6-14-0 for the Dodgers. A couple of home runs in the seventh inning, enough to turn the tide for the Reds in that one. Auerbach hit a... Solo homer, his second of the year, and then George Foster hit a three-run homer, his 17th of the year, and a four-run rally, giving the Reds a 7-6 win. The victory going to Doug Bear in relief, his second against three defeats, and Doug Rao took the loss, his fourth. He's won eight times. They had over 46,000 at Cincinnati. The Reds beat the Dodgers by a run, 7-6. At Atlanta, the Braves came back with four runs to the bottom of the seventh inning to pull out a 9-7 victory over the Giants. 9-12-1 for the Braves, 7-10-1 for the Giants. Phil Negro, the winner, 9-9. Nine nine. The loss going to Moffitt in relief. Randy is 6-4. LeMaster and Clark both homered for San Francisco for Clark, his 14th of the year. And Dale Murphy had a grand slammer for Atlanta, his 9th of the season, but they won it with four runs in the 7th inning, 9-7. At Chicago, the Philadelphia Phillies have beaten the Cubs 6-5. 6-15-0 for the Bills, 5-12-0 for the Cubs. Ruthven, the winner, 5-7. The loss going to Holtzman, Ken is 1-3. Cardinal hit a two-run homer for the Bills, his second. Vale, a three-run homer for the Cubs, his first. And the Phillies win it 6-5. And at Houston, San Diego has beaten the Astros 6-2. 6-8-0 for the Padres, 2-6-0 for Houston. Gaylord Perry wins his ninth of the year against three setbacks, while Dixon is the loser, standing 4-4. Four four. Ashford homered for the Padres as did Turner. A look at the American League scores in one minute. Denny's introduces a new menu just for kids 12 and under. Happy egg and kid cakes, a burger with hamburger, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, French toast, chicken, spaghetti, ice cold Coca-Cola, and lots more. And Denny's kids menu punches out to make a fun mess. Kids can be a clown, a robot, a witch, or even a monster. My kids went bananas over the Denny's menu, and it kept them entertained and out of our hair. And where else can you see kids for 60 cents for spaghetti or 55 cents for French toast and strawberries? Denny's is a great place for kids. Denny's new menu for kids. Food kids like at prices parents like. Remember Denny's new kids' menu and the fun masks that'll keep them entertained. Good food and good fun. Welcome to Denny's. Yeah, good. 
In the American League, there were three doubleheaders in addition to the Yankees, Tigers, twin bill. At Toronto, the Blue Jays and Cleveland Indians split their doubleheader. Cleveland won the opening game 2-0. The Jays, the nightcap, 3-1. In the first game, uh, Rick Waits and Jim Kern combined on a three-hit shutout in the 2-0 Indians victory. 2-7 row for the Tribe, 0-3-1 for Toronto. Waits won his sixth against eight defeats. While Lemanchik suffered his tenth loss, Dave has won but twice. Alexander hit a home run for Cleveland. That apparently was all they needed. He came in the second inning to break a score to tie. His 16th of the year. In the nightcap, the Blue Jays uh, broke a 1-1 tie in the bottom of the sixth inning and went on to beat the Indians 3-1. 3-7-0 for Toronto. 1-4-0 for Cleveland. Jesse Jefferson all the way with a four-hitter. His sixth win against seven defeats. Dave Freisleben getting a start again. Suffered his second straight loss. Larbell Blank's home run accounted as the only Cleveland uh, run. The Boston-Baltimore game was postponed because of rain in Baltimore today. At Minnesota, a doubleheader, and in the opening game, the Chicago White Sox gave Larry Doby his first win as the manager of the White Sox, beating the Twins 8-5, 8-13 and over Chicago, 5-7-5 for the Twins. Wilbur Wood had help from Willoughby in the eighth inning with the winners 9-5. Zom, the loser, Jeff is 7-6. Naha Rodney hit his seventh homer for Chicago. Smalley, his eighth for the Twins. Rivera, a three-run homer in the eighth inning for Minnesota, his second of the year. In the second game, after four and a half innings, it's a wild one, six to five, Minnesota leading Chicago. Uh, Jackson started for the Twins, relieved by Marshall in the fifth. Schuler began for the White Sox, Hinton taking over in the second inning. Will Fong is at a two-run homer for the Twins. Sauter home, a solo homer for the White Sox. It's Minnesota six to five over Chicago after uh, four and a half innings of the second game. At California, in the, seventh, in the eighth inning of play now, a 3-3 tie, the Rangers and Angels. Doc Ellis started for Texas. Comer relieving in the seventh inning. Now Dyer Miller has become the third pitcher used by California. Zip and Bobby Thompson both hit solo home runs for Texas for Richie Zip, his 13th of the year. At Seattle, after five innings of play, Milwaukee and the Mariners tied 2-2. Two two. Caldwell going for Milwaukee full on the mound for Seattle. Pachorek. It is first homer of the year for Seattle. In a doubleheader at Oakland, the first game is over. The second game not yet underway. And the Royals came up with four runs in the eighth inning to pull out a 4-2 to victory over Oakland. 4-11-1 for Kansas City. 2-8-1 for the A's. As Gura got the win, Larry is 6-2. Lacey and Relief took the loss his fourth. He's won six. Page homered for Oakland in that game. I'll be back to take another look at the Tiger Yankee Day in one minute. <laughs> easy to do these days, but we all need the security savings can provide and the extra money they can earn, especially at the credit union where members always receive very generous dividends on their savings. It's one of the advantages of belonging to your own financial organization. And when you see the National Credit Union Administration emblem, you know your savings account in the credit union is insured to $40,000 by an agency of the federal government. Looking for a worthwhile savings program? Discover what your credit union can do for you. Yankee Stadium, a crowd of 50,449, saw the Yankees take both ends of a doubleheader from the Tigers, winning the opening, opening game 3-2 on an eighth-inning sacrifice fly by Chris Chambliss after a hotly disputed play had given the Yankees two runs to tie it in the seventh inning. And the Yankees came on to win the nightcap in the ninth inning on a two-run, two-out homer by Gary Thomason after a three-run homer by Greg Nettles earlier in the ball game, the Yankees winning the nightcap 5-3. Totals in the opener for New York, 3-8-2 for Detroit, 2-6-1. John Hiller, the loser in relief, 6-4. Ron Gidry, a 13th straight win. Rich Gossage picks up his 12th save. In the nightcap, uh, it was 5-6-0 for New York, 3-12-0 for the Tigers. As Jim Slayton suffered his fifth loss, he's won eight. Uh, Rich Gossage, who had saved in the opening game, got credit for the win in the nightcap. He came on in the top of the ninth inning, picked up his fourth win against seven defeats. So the Tigers uh, stumbling on the road to drop six of the nine games at Cleveland and New York now come home to take on the Blue Jays in the first two games tomorrow night. And that's today's scoreboard show. 
from Yankee Stadium, Paul Carey, wishing you a good evening. The Paul Carey Sports Scoreboard has been brought to you by Denny's Restaurant, serving you throughout the country 24 hours a day. The Paul Carey Sports Scoreboard is heard right after all Detroit Tiger baseball games. This is the Detroit Tigers Baseball Network.